Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in East Bumblefuck, New Mexico on this Monday now afternoon, January 23rd, 2017. So this is just kind of an addendum to my economic meltdown roundup rant this morning. Before I head off into the rest of the year, I just want to do my annual version of my global risk assessment report rant coming out of Davos, Switzerland. Uh, Davos, Switzerland, probably the one thing to recommend that bunch of goddamn billionaire planet eater playboys over there. Uh, the one thing worth mentioning is this report every year, the Global Risk Report, which of course this year the Global Risk Report 2017. I'm going to put the link to this thing on here. I heartily uh, invite you to spend some time with this. This could easily be a two-hour rant. I'm just going to put the link on it and share a couple of observations about it. This was how Scientific American, this was their somewhat confusing report on there. Okay, take it away, Scientific American. So, what tops, <clears throat> what tops the ranking in this year's report for the next 10 years? So each report looks ahead. So this is looking ahead to at the global risks facing this planet for the next 10 years. Uh, and now I, I want you to understand, make no mistake about this, guys, uh, what this global risk report is. It, it like, the, like these goddamn billionaire planet eaters, give a shit about what this report means to the planet. What they're looking at is what it means to their bottom line. That's all they give a shit about. My guess is there were probably about six people at this meeting where Al Gore was the keynote, one of the keynote speakers. But anyway, just so you understand that these idiots at Davos, uh, I doubt any of them read this thing. Maybe they read this Scientific American article. Okay, so what tops the ranking in this year report for the next 10 years? tops the ranking. Extreme weather events and other natural disasters, large-scale involuntary migration, terrorist and cyber attacks, as well as the use of weapons of mass destruction. As for interdependencies between these risks, profound social instability, more pronounced than we see today, appears as a key center of gravity, affecting many other risks and being affected by many others as well. Furthermore, society is not keeping pace with technological change of the 12 Emerging technologies examined in this report, experts found artificial intelligence and robotics to have the greatest potential benefits, but also the greatest potential negative effects and the greatest need for better governments. So uh, there, there you go. That is, this is just a tiny little section of this. But you might come away from thinking uh, about what I just said that, what did they say? That extreme weather events and other natural disasters tops, tops the ranking in this year's report. So why was I not surprised when I actually call up the report, that uh, in this entire report, take a wild guess, I guess they break it down into five 
major areas. And then in, in each one of those areas, I mean, this is a real, uh, a real octopus, which uh, again, you can go on the link and break it all down. So why was I not a bit surprised to find out the, that, that uh, these extreme weather events and these other environmental problems did not top, did not top the report, but actually came in at the very bottom of the report. Of uh, so you know they look at the, these uh, these are the the major areas uh, of global risk 2017. No shit, Sherlock, the number one, the number one, uh, far and away number one is the economic risks, the global economic risk. And of course, the, the first word in, in this part is growth. And uh, this, uh, you know, it's no shit Sherlock. We're talking goddamn Davos, Switzerland. What tops this report is not the environment, climate change, extreme weather events, climate refugees, all of this shit. It is the need to grow the global economy. You know, what do you think these goddamn billionaires are, are going to see as the number one problem facing this planet? Is that it's that the economy, the global industrial economy, the single biggest threat to the planet, the biggest, uh, well, in many ways, and certainly the number one cause of these extreme weather events, the way we're going to fix the planet is to jack up economic growth. I have burned the batteries out of my bullshit detector button. So anyway, that was, uh, of course, that was what topped the report. And they break all that down, uh, which takes up about half the goddamn report. Um... Uh, and then we get to society, the social factors, which is about uh, three paragraphs. And then technology. I've had rants about this. Uh, and the, called technology, the number one goal is managing disruption. I've, I've talked about these disruptive technologies and how this planet and all of these billionaires are going to uh, react to this. And this is where they talk about artificial intelligence and robotics being the uh, king of disruptive technologies. Fourth on their list is geopolitics. Uh, to say any one of these could be a rant, and taking up the tail end at the very bottom of the report is the environment. There you go. Anyway, take it away. Uh, these planets, I don't really know. I wish I knew more about who exactly the authors of this was. Okay. Uh, again, uh, you can find all of this. I'm just going to read the environment section from the 2017 Global Risk Report. <clears throat> A cluster of interconnected environment-related risks, including extreme weather events, climate change, and water crises, has consistently featured among the top-ranked global risks for... In, environmental risk for the past seven edition of editions of the Global Risk Report. Environment-related risk again stand out in this year's global risk landscape, with every risk in the environment category lying in the higher impact, higher likelihood quadrant. I really broke this down. I remember last year in St. Croix really breaking all of this down and everything that was true one year ago is a hell of a lot more 
true. If anything, it's been elevated. Every single risk in this category is in the uh, higher impact, higher likelihood quadrant this year. Environmental risks are also closely interconnected with other risk categories. For example, four of the top 10 risk and interconnections in this year's report involve, invo involve environmental risks. Uh, the most frequently cited of these being the pairing of water crises with the failure of climate change mitigation and adaptation. And all this shows that ineffective management of the global commons, the global commons, the oceans, atmosphere, and climate system can have local as well as global consequences. For example, changing weather patterns or water crises can trigger or exacerbate geopolitical and societal risks such as domestic or regional conflict and involuntary migration. There you go. And uh, then, of course, I really wish I had not burned out the batteries of my bullshit detector button because it would certainly be going off right now about how progress was made during 2016 in addressing climate change and other environmental risks, reflecting firm international resolve on the transition to a low carbon global economy and building resilience to climate change. All right, we got it. That was bullshit out of my dying batteries. And of course, leading that, you know, what they're, what they're talking about here is this unadulterated horseshit Paris Agreement. Uh, yeah, Paris Agreement. And, and then, of course, how renewable energy is going to save the planet over the next 10 years. All right, my bullshit detector button has come alive. Come alive, come back to life with this inundation of bullshit. But then they get back to reality after that little uh, veering off into the bullshit. However, the pace of change is not yet fast enough. Global greenhouse gas emissions are growing currently by about 52 billion tons of CO2 equivalent per, per year. Um, blah, blah, blah. E even with all of their goddamn green technology, the year 2016 is the warmest on record. We've been through that. Uh, it, this was the first year the global average temperature was one degree Celsius or more than the average. Uh, we've, we've heard this one uh, over uh, and over and then quoting the emissions gap report from the United Nations Environment Program shows that even if countries deliver on their un, you know, deliver on these, uh, these goddamn uh, bullshit uh, promises made in, um, in Paris, even if they were to deliver on their commitments, which they're not, the world will still warm by over three degrees Celsius. Uh, yes, for anybody not understanding this, uh, and no shit, Sherlock, uh, as warming increases, impacts grow, Arctic sea ice, uh, you know, at record lows, the Great Barrier Reef is pretty much gone the way of the dodo bird. Uh, you know, all these refugees 
what are they saying, 21 and a half million people have already been displaced by climate-related events each year since 2008. They're uh, either relocated already or making plans to do so, I bet. Here's the World Bank forecasting that water stress could cause extreme societal stress in regions such as the Middle East and the Sahel. Yes, the Sahel, I love that name. Uh, the World Bank also forecasts that water availabilities in cities could decline by as much as two-thirds by 2050 as a result of climate change. Uh, 330 million people were affected in India by drought in 2016. Jesus. Uh, the confluence of risks around water scarcity, climate change, extreme weather events, and involuntary migration remains a potent, a potent cocktail and a risk multiplier, especially in the world economy's more fragile environmental and political context. With power and influence increasingly distributed, however, there is a growing recognition that the response to environmental risks cannot be delivered by international agencies and governments alone. Yes, so it is up, I guess, to the to the uh, planet eaters at Davos, Switzerland to save the planet since clearly uh, the UN ain't gonna do it. And so then they, we actually get to see the speech by none other than that save the planet billionaire Al Gore. Okay, I'm gonna read uh, the first and last paragraph of Al Gore's speech at the Davos World Economic Forum. <clears throat> Take it away, Al. Every day we spew 110 million tons of heat-trapping global warming pollution into our atmosphere. The accumulated amount of all that man-made global warming pollution is trapping as much energy heat as much extra heat energy as would be released by 400,000 Hiroshima-class atomic bombs exploding every single day. 400,000 Hiroshima bombs. All of that extra heat energy is disrupting the hydrological cycle evaporating water vapor from the oceans and leading to stronger storms, more extreme floods, and deeper and longer droughts, declining crop yields, water stresses, the spread of tropical diseases, poleward, and refugee crises, and political instability, among other problems. Our efforts to solve the climate crisis are a race against time. But, but, and here's the but, the technologies embodying the fourth industrial revolution and the implications of these changes for business and society contain hope, contain hope for the acceleration of the necessary solutions to the climate crisis. And then he goes on about how these goddamn solar panels and electric cars and smart grids, oh uh, God, 
are going, and the, don't forget the internet of things. The internet of things is going to save the planet, according to Uncle Al, closing with this comment, we are going to prevail in our collective effort to solve this climate crisis, and it will be in large part due to our increasing ability to mitigate the burning of dirty fossil fuels through the opportunities presented to us by the fourth industrial revolution. I'm so glad to have my bullshit detector button. Yes, I guess it was uh, the first three industrial revolutions that got us into this mess. So, uh, as Uncle Al Gore telling those billionaires at Davos, it is the fourth industrial revolution that is going to save us all. Yep, yep, yep. But anyway, guys, uh, as I say, I'm going to put the link to this whole mishmash, and you can dive right in and decide for yourself whether those planet-eating playboys in Davos, Switzerland are going to save this planet or not. But I need to go save my chicken pie cooking in my toaster oven. So I better wrap up this year's Global Risks 2017 rant here at the opening of the age of Trump. Talking about a Global Risk 2017, Jesus, I think Donald Trump could certainly, uh, should have gotten honorable mention somewhere and the biggest global risk threat to this planet over the next 10 years. Bye, guys.